All right, guys, we got Gus, Guts versus. That's just some yarn. We got Guts versus Nightmare. Berserk versus Sword Calibur. Guts has a fucked up backstory. For untold decades, scientists have searched for a legitimate method of measuring a person's level of badassness, completely missing the obvious answer. Just check out the size of his sword, like Guts, the brutal <laughs> black swordsman from Berserk. And Nightmare, the demonic scourge from Soul Calibur. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the realm of Midland, rumors run rampant of a man wielding a humongous blade slaying any who get in his way. But before his legend grew, this black swordsman was known mentors. simply as Guts. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited! Guts is one of the most badass and hardcore characters ever. <laughs> but the story of Guts is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, it's kind of dark. Not just kind of. After a brutal massacre, Guts was born from the corpse of his mother, who had been uh. hanged from a tree. And <laughs> we're just getting started! Baby Guts was discovered by a traveling band of mercenaries and was adopted by the camp whore, who died to plague three years later. Oh, With no man. one left to turn to, Guts was mentored by the mercenary leader Gambino, who began training him in swordsmanship when he was just six years old. Hey, Guts! Why don't you use a smaller sword, one right for your side? <laughs> we don't carry any baby-sized swords for kids here anyway. An extremely determined student of war, Guts was soon brought onto the battlefield and killed his first man at the age of nine. Oh, damn. Despite his skill, life wasn't all murder, sunshine, and rainbows. Young oh, Guts man. was constantly abused in many ways that I don't really want to go into, but these awful things he had to endure kickstarted the long, excruciating process of grooming Guts into the scariest man in the world. After killing his crazed adoptive father in self-defense, Guts became oh a lone mercenary, and a damn good one. Oh, Recognized for his terrible. skill, he was recruited by the mercenary crew called the Band of the Hawk, led by an ambitious man named Griffin. The Hawk's that Raiders bitch. would be Guts' first taste of camaraderie and friendship. Over the next three years, they single-handedly ended a 100-year war. Things were looking oh, up for good. Guts. And then Griffin summoned a horde of demons, transformed into a bad monster, murdered all of Guts' friends, and claimed ownership of Guts' soul by branding his oh, neck. Dude. If that wasn't dramatic enough, Griffith then raped Guts' girlfriend oh. in the pool of his friend's blood as he watched, pinned down with his eye gouged out and forced to cut off his own arm. Oh, Definitely dude. not his best day. After all that, Guts dedicated his entire life to murdering Griffith as painfully and brutally as possible, Worth while fighting demons on a daily I basis as they are drawn to his brand like moths to a flame. But to do this, he needs the right tools for the job. He carries a belt of throwing knives and a pouch of mini bombs even demons Whoa. can't take. He also received a new mechanical hand, which houses a flamethrower, repeater crossbow, Whoa. and a hidden single shot cannon. Perfect for blasting a demon's face off. Surprise, bitch! <laughs> but none of that compares to Guts' primary tool of destruction, the okay, giant blade so known hard. as Dragon Slayer. <laughs> Massive, thick, heavy, and far too rough. It's too big to be called a sword. More like a heap of raw iron. And it might it just be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Forged by the legendary hermit Godo, it's, Dragon Slayer was made to, tall, well, slay a dragon. Unfortunately, it was it's laughed off as impossible to use by anyone. Except for Guts. Sitting six and a half feet long and weighing over 400 pounds, Damn. the Dragon Slayer is enormous, though not unfeasible. In real life, the largest sword ever used in battle belonged to a Frisian freedom fighter and stood seven feet tall. Whoa. Though it wasn't nearly as heavy, only 14 pounds. Yeah, that's more, that's With more a single pulled. swing of Dragon Slayer, Guts can cleave through a man wearing Holy heavy armor. Fuck, even Along horse. with his weapon, his horse, and any other people, animals, or demons who happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And after killing over a thousand demons, no, I did not stutter, Dragon Slayer has bathed in so much demonic blood that it now rests in both the physical and astral planes Dope. of existence. Somehow. Meaning it is capable of harming any supernatural being. 
Even ghosts! Mr. No, like, only one hit thing. is an absolute monster in combat. Clip. He can move faster than the eye can track, killed 100 soldiers on his own in a single night, and once jumped in the mouth of a giant sea god, what? cut his way through it, okay, and killed no. it from within. You intend to gamble your life on a single strike. Guts will do anything to defeat his foes, including jumping into fire or allowing himself to be impaled just to gain an advantage. And somehow he always survives. He's fallen hundreds of feet, gotten stabbed through the face, taken 1,000 supernatural punches at once, and even been run over by an elf fairy monster what going the fuck supersonic speed. But his disregard for his own safety can be costly. Honestly, the oh, only reason shit. he's still alive is pure dumb luck and unstoppable Holy willpower. Crap. And if Guts wasn't tough enough on his own, he wears the Berserker armor, the most insane battle gear you've ever yep. seen. Activating the Berserker armor seals off the wearer's nervous system, making him immune to pain and its natural inhibition. That's not good. This allows Guts to fight at his fullest potential, boosting his power and speed at the risk of damaging his own body. Yeah, that's why it's not good. With this armor, Guts' sword swing is more powerful than a cannonball. Oh. Though the force yeah. can break his own arm. Yeah, but don't that's worry, not good. the cursed Berserker armor will literally rip and pierce his body to pin the bones and muscle back in place. Now, don't oh, get the wrong man. idea. The armor does not actually heal Guts. It just holds him together. This is dangerous because, well, even though Guts won't feel pain, that doesn't make him invincible. Plus, the Berserker armor also kind of forces Guts to give in to his inner demons and lose all sense of morality and restraint, uh, making him good. the most violent demon killer ever. Violent and completely uncontrollable. Guts is the embodiment of rage and the epitome of badassery. Believe me, the last thing you want to do is get in this guy's way. Oh. My sword has gotten very dull. However, it's three times as thick and does three times the damage of a normal sword. You'd better pray you die quickly or this could be painful. Oh boy. Long, long ago, Transcending history and the world, an enormous sword was forged, designed to be the deadliest weapon on the battlefield. It's it not was nice. called Soul Edge, and it was a beast! Gigantic, powerful, sexy. What? At a daunting six feet one inch in length, no ordinary Guts soldier could bigger. wield it. But those who could proved unstoppable. It left no survivors in its wake. Just like my ex-wife at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> However, a great evil dwelt within the sword. After claiming victory upon victory and being bathed in the blood and hatred of countless oh, foes, geez. a fire was born inside Soul Edge. Literally, it's a demon made mm. of friggin' fire! The demon Inferno had one purpose, to infect the world with evil and chaos. But in order to accomplish this, he needed a warrior capable of wielding the true power of Soul Edge. He planned to possess this warrior and transform them into the azure-clad Knight of Darkness, Nightmare. Inferno's first victim came in the late 16th century, when a pirate named Cervantes de Leon raided an English galleon and discovered the intriguing blade aboard, claiming it as his own. But as we know, this was no ordinary flesh-covered sword with an eyeball. Inferno <laughs> seized this opportunity and possessed the pirate, testing his body by slaughtering the entire population of a Spanish oh port town. Oh my god. Talk about a test drive! Unfortunately, while powerful, Cervantes was not the ideal vessel Inferno sought. So he made him sit in that town until two chicks showed up, killed his ass, and somebody more powerful picked up the sword. That someone was a knight named Siegfried, and this was the body Inferno was looking for. Once oh Siegfried's hand touched Soul Edge, Inferno began eating away at his soul, yeah, torturing like him it. endlessly and feeding on his fear and anger, transforming him into Nightmare. Nightmare was powerful enough to threaten all of Europe, conquering whole armies and devouring thousands of innocent souls. If you haven't figured it out by now, Soul Edge is kind of like the ring from Lord of the Rings. If it could cut people and hunger for souls! <laughs> However, Soul Edge's power was incomplete. At some point, it had been broken, and shards of the demon's sword had been scattered across the world. To unlock Soul Edge's true power, Nightmare set off to find the lost pieces of his sword and repair it. 
As Nightmare discovered each shard, the power of Soul Edge grew, and so oh did Nightmare's. He can fight with numerous stances, channel fire and lightning through Soul Edge, and devour the souls of hundreds at once with Soul Wave. Watch this! Despite Nightmare's ever-growing power, Siegfried constantly battled to free himself from Soul Edge's curse. And eventually, he succeeded. Yay! The two did battle atop Osterinsberg Castle. But Nightmare's power was so great, the entire structure was obliterated by Whoa. a single swing of his vile blade. Just like a crazy ex-girlfriend, he figured mm -hmm. if he couldn't have that body, no one can. Soul Edge cannot be defeated by an ordinary blade. In fact, only one weapon has ever been able to harm it a supposedly holy blade called Soul Calibur. Unknown to most, Soul Calibur is actually the final shard of Soul Edge, reforged into a second sword made specifically to combat its demonic counterpart. Poor guy, how would you feel if some asshole decided forgets. to make a weapon specifically designed to murder you? And it kept showing up everywhere! Nightmare has come close to conquering the world on numerous occasions, yet a warrior wielding Nightmare Soul Calibur one. always seems to show up and hold him at bay. While Soul Edge seems indestructible, apart from that pesky holy sword, Inferno does require a mortal body to create Nightmare. Should Nightmare fall, Inferno can risk his own life by manifesting himself to protect Soul Edge, as his very existence is tied to the anything. sword. But if Nightmare manages to absorb that final shard, Soul Edge and Nightmare will merge into their ultimate form, Night Terror, a larger, deadlier, flyier Nightmare. Flyer. Oh yeah, <laughs> when one gains the power of flyingness? Duh. <laughs> no matter the time, place, or vessel, few can match the vile trio of Soul Edge, Inferno, and Nightmare. Blood. Darkness. I shall drown the world in both. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end I, I this debate once and win. for all. It's time for a death I'm battle. I'm not sure. Oh, giant swords, yeah! Swords. I guess it's probably gonna be hunting this right now. Please gather the shards. Yep, it's now evil sword. You're in my way. Stand aside. Slimber in my darkness. Fight!
Oh my god, I think he killed him. I told you to stay out of my way. Wait. Oh crap. What about this? Still prevails. It's He's true. Too All to die. I mean, this guy lives in a world where giant monsters are trying to kill you, eat you, rape you, or all three at the same time. And that's just Monday. <laughs> it's true. All his life, Guts has had the odds stacked against him, and yet he's still kicking while everything else is dead. Oh, but Wizard, I thought only Soul Caliber could destroy Soul Ed. <laughs> that's also true in the Soul Caliber world. However, Inferno exists on an astral plane. If you recall, Guts' sword Dragon Slayer also exists on such a plane, leaving no question that it could destroy Soul Edge. Plus, his Berserker armor bought him plenty of time to land the killing blow. Yeah, because it will literally let you fight on until all of your bones are shattered and the last drop of your blood is spilled. And it's not like Soul Edge was going to have any luck tempting Guts into picking it up and turning into another nightmare. Not only has Guts dealt with enough demonic shit to know that's a bad idea, he really loves that Dragon Slayer. <laughs> He's not giving that up for anything. Guts was just a whole nother caliber. The winner is Guts. Yeah! That was a nice death battle. See y'all in the next one.